Good morning. Got to fill the boss up, get some more fuel down to the combine for today. It rained a little this morning. Like everything's just a little wet, but I don't think it's actually going to stop us from shelling corn today. So a little bit of a slower start. That's okay. We're still drying wet corn from yesterday. We had a big day yesterday. Did over 100 acres. So um, just can take a minute to get caught up here this morning. says I'm being mean to you again, Brock. Do they? I don't run anything out. <laughs> they have no concept of tone or they missed the whole line. You haven't watched the video yet. I watched some oh, of them. They, they didn't catch the line in there about it's really not his fault. He shouldn't feel bad about it or any I, of that stuff. I, I, did, I did see that. I, I, well, they didn't because yeah. they think that I'm the worst person in the world for being mean I to you. I feel bad because it's downtime. Downtime, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bolt. You know, a bolt's what, 20 bucks? I doubt it's expensive. That. Expensive bolt, grade eight bolts, twenty bucks. Right there, two replacements. So it's not it's, it's the downtime. It doesn't but matter. It, it's a bolt. So and we, and we got it fixed in one day. It's not like we're down for a while now. So it's right. All right. Now the hydraulic hose. That one has to be your fault. Clearly, you went out there with some side cuts or something and snipped, snipped a the hole bottom in side it, so it just because like you were tired and didn't want to work anymore. I'm sure yeah, that's what that's you did. That's exactly what I did. I just don't want to replace. What it else? I, I mean, the hydraulic right lines there. don't just blow up on their own. Hmm, what's that? Hydraulic hose with a hole in it. Imagine that. All right. Um, it still kind of just rains on and off, little drizzly spells, so I don't know. I think we might wait a little bit before we start shelling. Brock and I are taking the fuel trailer down. We're gonna fuel up the combine and uh, make some quick minor repairs. We might, I don't know, we should replace that hose is what we should do, but I don't really wanna work on it. We're gonna be able to shell here in an hour or so. Come on. I climbed up here to uh, start to fuel up on the combine today. Ah, uh, we gotta get this primed. Hold on. Uh, but yesterday when we were filling, we ran the fuel trailer empty, so we had to reprime it. But anyway, um, mistakes were made in fueling yesterday. Fuel cap did not get put back on, and now there's fuel everywhere, and that's a problem. Yesterday when I was shelling, I was kind of watching these stalk stompers here on the other side, and I noticed this. Pretty loose, so I got out and looked, and that ah, U-bolt's busted. I have a new one. We're going to swap it. Better tight now uh, this brackets in rough shape too though we've got a crack there it's bent on the bottom is that a crack that's a crack that's the one that broke on the other side so I did look it up on uh, May West's website these are May West stock stompers uh, they have a new style and bracket so I'm gonna take some pictures and send them an email and say hey I need to update this and see what they want to do which means sell me the new ones probably all right, that stuff is ready to go. Target field is right across the ditch here. I'm debating whether we can go with the wet, damp stalks or if that's going to cause me all kinds of issues with the corn head plugging like it started to last night. I don't know. I would like to get 75 acres done today, and, well, we can't wait all day if we're going to get 75 acres done, so it's about time to start moving. Well, right or wrong, we brought a truck down here, parked it over there. I didn't turn them parking lights off whoops and uh we're gonna we're gonna give this a shot see what happens all right we've got to get this opened up here my uh <laughs> ncga contest supervisor is on his way uh, right through here is the best part of this field this is traditionally our very best cornfield um i expect it to do very well and um you know i'll be disappointed when it doesn't <laughs> no, it'll be fine it'll be fine the wet stalks are much less brittle, so there's hardly any stalks going into the combine. It's all going right down through the head. Ears are popping off and coming in. That actually makes the combine work pretty good when stuff's a little damp. 
The only issue is that the uh, any leaves or the husks that are going through can sometimes stick to the sieve and the chaffer, and so you got to kind of watch that, make sure you're not throwing it through. Um, but as much snow as we ran in last week, I think we'll be okay. Uh, we'll, we'll just watch it. We're, you got to remember we're moving a ton of air through this machine, and the air kind of keeps everything elevated and uh, it dries it out. So should be okay. I don't see any fresh raindrops on the windows, so I think the rain is pretty well past us. All right, we're getting some endros opened up. We got some more to do on there and then along the woods and stuff, but we're gonna make a pass through the middle here and see how much of a waste of time the NCGA entry is in this field. I don't know. There is some good corn out here, but our stand is not perfect, and I think that's gonna be enough of a problem that 250 is probably not gonna happen out here. But we'll see, we'll find the best spot in the field. Oh, that was that was a bad thing. My elbow push, pushed that button. You don't wanna push that button. That's the, that's the, somebody's in the head button, shut it off now button. <laughs> we got it, it's all good. Anyway, there is some better stuff over that way, I think. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep working our way around ends and we'll make a couple of passes through the middle just to kinda, do some, some probing, detecting, and figure out where we should make our entry at. You guys remember when I did the pop can challenge when we were planting corn? I think that was this year, and that was this field. I know it was this field. It was like this pass right here. But I can't remember if that was this spring or two years ago. I, it had to be this year. It had to be this spring. Yeah. Go back and watch my planting videos. You'll see that. But basically, you set a full pop can on a row unit, and you plant across the field and see if you can make it from one end to the other without it falling off. I made it all the way to right here, where we hit the tracks from those endros, before it finally fell. We did pretty good. All right, we finally got the field opened up. We even got a cut through the middle here. Some of this is good, some of it's not. We're not gonna have a great entry. 220, I've seen some 240, 50s, occasionally a 260. Um, it is what it is. We're gonna go over here into some of this stuff that, that looks the best and get our acre and a quarter, weigh it out, be done with it. 238, I don't know. I thought there'd be some stretches in here that would go over 250, but it's okay. I chose this row. This probably was not the right row, but I chose it anyway. We'll see what it does. Nah. That's not gonna help. Maybe I'll choose a different row. I don't know if we're gonna accept this one. It doesn't count until we measure it and put it in the truck, so I can I can throw this one out. Nope, that ain't gonna do it. We're scrapping this one. See how many acres we get in this pass, but I think it was better back over there where we cut through the middle. We'll jump back over that way. This is this is better. This is better. This is better. Okay. I feel better. Now we just gotta find another pass because it's gonna take a almost a full round, or yeah, a full round to get the acre and a quarter. I am uh, waiting for him to get his measurement. Just jumped out of the combine here real quick to look at uh, some of these ears some. And uh, big, impressive, long ears. They're not real fat. This hybrid kind of hides its yield a little bit, um, but throws these really long ears that are, are pretty nice. One thing that we are seeing, I've not talked much about this yet, but uh, ear molds have become a major problem in our area, and uh, I'm not immune from that. In fact, you look at this and you can see we've got some white mold there. That's Diplodia ear rot, or ear mold. This one's got a little bit as well. It's not a good thing. I don't like to see it. It's not on every ear, um, but it can cause uh some some grain quality issues now the diplodia is not as bad as the gibberella which is a different type of ear mold that is pink on the tip here i don't see any of that so that's good look how filled out that is that is awesome um so that's good but the problem is like you can see it growing down inside there like we got to get this harvested and dried to stop that mold from from growing and, and progressing um we'll talk some more about that little later this afternoon here oh this entry was way more at work than what it's worth because it's not going to be great the other one's definitely better um essentially that was as far as i needed to go to get what i needed and i didn't want to 
want to do a bunch extra and have the yield drop or something. So, uh, we're getting our final measurement. Go we'll empty this and we'll haul it in. Well, it's a pile of corn. I don't know how many bushels of corn it is, but it came off of 1.28 acres. I know that. All right. Yield contest to entry submitted. I think I'll actually tell you what this one was because it was less than the last one which sets a floor, but doesn't tell you how good the first one was, because I didn't tell you that. So this one here, we were at um, 257, 257. 257 is not bad. I will not complain about that. It's not great, but it's good. So anyway, we're ready to keep shelling and finish this field up and keep things moving. We still got an A-light on on our wet bin, but not a whole lot of wet corn around, so time to pick up the pace a little bit. Okay, we've got uh, about 18 acres done here. Kind of went some strips through the middle there. Um, we're going to work off this way, and then we'll go back over there and catch the long rows over there later. So 46 acres in the field total, which means we have 28-ish to go. Uh, it should take us probably three hours here, so that's 2 o'clock. That puts us right at 5 and then 30 acres down the road. We should be able to get that all done tonight. But... There's going to be a lot of bushels on this field. This is good corn. The next field that we want to go do was actually the very last planted stuff. It's, in fact, a blend of basically every open partial plot bag and every bag of seed corn that I had left. So who knows what the moisture is or anything like that. It's just going to be a blend. Um, but we got to get it done, and today's as good a day as any. Well, we got uh, the stuff over there done. I've got some over there done. We're splitting the middle here. Doing the last so oh, eight acres or so in this field, uh, yield keeps climbing. It's good corn in here. Every time I turn the phone to the monitor, it drops. I was just in the two thirties, and then it drops to the two teens. And whatever, it's all good. It's it's this is good corn. So uh, we have caught the trucks. We got a loaded truck and a half loaded grain cart after we get done with this round. If the truck is not back, which it probably will not be, I might have to take a break that's okay so now we just keep moving we are flying through this corn and it is because we just keep moving it's full it's full grand count combine's full phil just pulled in with a truck so brock is unloading right now so he'll be down here in a minute but uh, i'm gonna get out and check some of this corn a little bit I didn't really cab corn. I mean, a few kernels fell over. Most of that's old. It's been there. There was a tile line. That's the problem. I'm going to blame the tile line. Yes, yes, yes. But, all right. Let's take a look. This is some of the best corn on the farm right in this stretch here. You can see we got a nice tall plant. Relatively healthy. Um, there is tar spot on these leaves. But I think it came in pretty late that most of it didn't really hurt hurt anything what i'm really interested in right now is ear molds so we're gonna pull back some ears and take a look all right I, I learned a lot in just looking at these 10 or 12 ears or whatever we've got here um one this hybrid fills out the tips really well i mean look at that that's incredible we got no tip back i probably could have planted this a little bit thicker that's what i'm learning from that that's incredible looks really good not a huge impressive ear you know, I can move my fingers all the way around it, but I mean, this is this stretch in here has been running 250, so it's really good corn. Um, what I don't like to see is we do have some of this diplodia, this ear mold here. You can see it on this ear. This one, just a little bit on the tip, fairly clean. Um, we've got it on this one, so we're gonna say that's two. This one's clean. This one's got just a little bit. It's soft, we'll call it three. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. This one's got it. That's four. This one's got it. Five. That one's good. There you go. That one's got it. So six out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve ears. So that's half of those ears have some ear mold on them. And that is not good. And uh you know, it's only going to get worse. So it is a good thing that we are getting this corn shell harvested and get it uh, in the bin and dry so that that stops. My cart's back. 
Now, one other thing that I am seeing here, you guys remember when we did that flag test study on emergence? So when we did that, most all of that corn was planted um, uh, late and we had really good even emergence. All came up within two days of each other. This corn was planted in April, not super early April, but in April and did not have that super good even emergence. You know how I can tell? Well, one, I was here in the spring and I remember it, but check out these ears. Look at this little guy. Yeah, that's no good. Look at uh, this little guy. That's no good. Was there another one? That's it. But in that 12 or maybe 14 years there, because I didn't count those two little ones, uh, we got two sort of nubbins. And you can see this plant is much spindlier. It's not as, there's no structure to it. See how small it is? It was outcompeted its entire life. Same thing here. We've got this spindly one. It's not a double. It's good spacing. The planter did its job. It just came up a little bit behind the other ones. You can see this one here is a little bit smaller than the ones next to it. And that's not a horrible ear, but it's not that ear. So that even emergence, that's why, because we end up with those smaller ears like that. And, you know, I'm willing to sacrifice it a little bit. What I am seeing is that the early planting, even where we get some of that, the corn is still better than the late planted stuff for us. And so while I really want good even emergence, I am not willing to plant later in order to get that. Like we have to find a way to do it other than planting late. And with our soils and the clay content that we have, um, it's just part of the game sometimes that it's sort of unavoidable. So we'll keep tweaking our planter and our starter and everything else to try and eliminate that as much as possible. But I still think that um, we have to keep pushing the planting window early as much as we can. Yeah, there's that tile line. We made it. He made it. Still full. Still full. But, let's see. Yeah, yeah. 290 right there. 280. 270. So, I mean, this is really good corn. Even with those few small ears in there, 240s, uh, we still have phenomenal corn. So... If I can do that, even getting those, I don't, maybe the answer is higher pops. And we saw that here where those ears are filled out all the way. We probably could have gotten more ears out here and had higher uh, population. That Then it hurts even less to have a few small ones because you've got more of them still. So, I don't know. I mean, clearly I'm not doing everything right, but I'm also not doing everything wrong either. Now. Back to the uh, ear molds and stuff. So we haven't had this for a number of years in our area. South of us in Ohio, they had uh, ear mold really bad last year. Um, there are several different types of ear molds in corn. And the one that we're seeing the most is that white fungus that gets in there. And that is called Diplodia. Diplodia ear rot, I think, something like that. Um, it is not good. But uh, it is, you know, it, 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 it's not horrible. It's just not good. So um, there's other type of ear molds. One of them that is kind of the worst that you don't want to see is called Gibberella ear mold. And uh, that has got a very characteristic pinkish color on the end of the ear. Uh, the kernels kind of, yeah, they just they turn pink. And it starts at the tip and works its way down. Um, I had a neighbor bring me some ears yesterday to look at that had a bluish green fungus on them. I looked that one up. It's called Trichoderma ear rot, I think it said. And um, while it looks bad and it's going to kill its yields and its grain quality, um, it doesn't actually cause what we worry about with the gibberella and somewhat the diplodia is vomitoxin or uh, don or um, um, uh, anyway, these this, this vomitoxin. It's basically uh, the ear molds can cause the grain to produce these microtoxins that, that can make the animals that eat them sick. And so just in the last week here, the local elevators have all started testing for this vomitoxin, not vomit, vama, vomitoxin. And uh, if your levels get too high, they will start to dock or deduct money from how much they're paying you. Or if it gets really high, 
they can just reject the corn altogether and say, we're not going to take it. That becomes a major problem for us. Now, we hauled in a lot of corn earlier in the fall, which wasn't really that early, but we were on the early side of corn harvest for the area because everybody was still running beans. And none of those loads got tested or rejected or anything. We didn't have any issues at all because nobody realized that the vomit toxin was in the area. And maybe at that time it wasn't. But these ear molds are continuing to progress and to grow and making that, uh, that level of vom worse. So I know that it is worse as you go east of here uh, towards Toledo area, fortunately or unfortunately, whatever we want to look at it. We didn't have any corn in our, in our Berkey farm this year, so we aren't fighting the high bomb levels over there. Um, so it, I don't really know whether we have that toxin in our corn or not. The thing about the ear molds is it can cause it. It doesn't necessarily cause it. So you can't just look at the ear or the grain and say, yep, that's got it, or no, it doesn't. You really have to run the test. And um, the, so the elevators are all testing every load that comes in. Um, what we are doing is storing this corn. We're putting it in a bin and we're gonna, we're gonna store it until um, you know, later in the winter or spring or even into the summer. So what typically can happen is the elevators sort of stop remembering that there's vom in the corn in March and just stop charging for it or docking for it. I don't know why that is, but that's what has happened in the past. Uh, but we're gonna, what we're gonna end up doing is putting this corn in our bins. We will call our crop insurance agents, have them come out and uh, pull some samples from our bins and they will send them off and get them tested. If our bins test high, uh, the crop insurance will actually discount our bushels. If that triggers a claim for our crop insurance, uh, they'll write us a check for it, and then whatever dock we get at the elevator we get, and it's made up for by uh, the crop insurance payment. So we do have some protection there, but uh, it's definitely not an ideal situation, and the best thing that we can do at this point is get it out of the field, get it dried and in the bins to stop it from getting worse. This is also a big part of the reason why we do not just let our corn set in the field to dry, right? Now this is coming out at 20 to 22 percent for the most part. That's not bad at all, but even when the corn was 25 or 28 percent, like if we didn't have beans to run, we'd be shelling the corn because you cannot let it set in the field because only bad things happen, right? It may dry slightly. I guess that's a good thing. But you can get vomit toxin in it. You can get more ear molds. You can have the stalks break. You can have uh, wildlife damage. You can have so many bad things happen that it affect either the yield or the quality that it is not worth leaving it in the field. It's much, much better for us to shell it wet, dry it, put it in the bin, and then basically corn in the bin is money in the bank. And it is, and that's much, much safer than storing it in the field, if you will. Now, I'm not gonna make any bold claims here. However, I will point out that uh, Seed Company, which does not want me to name them, has had really, really good performance from a grain quality standpoint when it comes to VOM levels in the corn. Uh, last year, down in central and southern Ohio, where the VOM was a much bigger issue, uh, our hybrids seemed to perform better than a couple of the big name competitors, which I also won't call out in this video. Uh, for whatever reason, the genetics that we use have better tolerance to that. Uh, and I talked to one of my seed customers from over in the Berkey area uh, a little while ago this afternoon. They kind of confirmed that in that one of their competitors had really high levels, was yielding really well, but had higher levels than what some of they've seen from the hybrids that I sold them. Now there's, there's a lot of factors that go into that, uh, and it's gonna vary more by hybrid than by brand, right? Um, but our stuff has performed very well. As far as what causes the ear molds or the, the diplodia, the gibberella, the trichoderma ear rots, all of those things, a lot of it has to do with moisture content, weather, and, um, and, and rainfall. What I think, so two weeks ago we had some warm stretch of weather. You guys remember that? We were shelling corn in t-shirts, 
Uh, guys were finishing up some beans. I think we were finishing beans up, but it was 80 degrees the end of October. Do you know what happens to corn that has 28% moisture and it's 80 degrees in October? It gets moldy. It rots. It rotted on the ear. I think that's what happened. I don't think the corn had this vom in early October, but it was still wet and it just cooled down and it was storing fine. And then all of a sudden it got super warm and this stuff started to grow and it's getting worse and worse and worse. And once it's there, it just keeps getting worse. And so uh, typically you'll see it worse in hybrids that have a upright ear with a tight husk. And even where we just pulled those ears back, the ones that were upright were more likely to have the, the diplodia on it than the ones that had tipped over. Well, an ear that has tipped over sheds the water. When we get rainfall, the water rolls off the end of it. If it's upright, the water can get in the end of that ear. And if the tusks are relatively tight, it doesn't get any airflow to dry it out. And so that causes it to get worse because it's in a moist, warm environment at that point. And so while while that warm weather was a blessing from getting the corn to dry from 28% down into 22, 23%, it's causing more problems than it was worth, I think, for some of these guys that are still running beans and the corn's gonna be in the field for a month yet. It's gonna get really bad. About the worst thing that could happen for those guys now is for it to get warm again. Fortunately, we're fairly cool. We've been in the 40s and 50s this week, and I think going to continue. Well, actually, it was sort of warm last yesterday. Today's much cooler. Um, but I did hear that, like, tonight, it's supposed to warm up overnight and be in the 60s overnight tonight. And I haven't looked at the forecast, but if we get a bunch of 60s and some 70-degree days, this year mold is going to explode on guys. It's going to get really, really ugly really fast. I'm getting sort of long-winded on this topic, so I'll try and wrap it up. But... Uh, what does the VOM, the vomitoxin levels in our corn do? What is the problem? Why is that an issue? Well, it's a toxin. And so when we feed this corn, because most all of our corn is going to one of two places, either directly to livestock feed, uh, could be pigs, could be cattle, could be chickens, whatever. That's the vast majority of what the corn gets used for. Right, well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that, but of our corn probably. Um, it can make certain species of animals sick. Uh, hogs are probably the most sensitive. And so when they're testing this, right, it, it's on a, a scale and it's in a parts per million. So it could be uh, anything under three parts per million is no big deal. Or maybe it's five parts per million, uh, the animals can eat just fine. But if you get up to eight parts per million, it starts to make them sick or they won't eat the corn. Um, and I know that it doesn't affect chickens the same as it does hogs. I know cattle are somewhat affected, but not as affected. Dairy more so than beef cattle. Um, so it, it just depends on, on the individual species, even to the down to the farm and the grower uh, to an extent. So uh, that's why they're testing and it matters. The other use for our corn is ethanol production. And you would think, well, it doesn't matter if there's vom in the corn for ethanol. And you're right, it doesn't for the actual ethanol production. But what's left over when you make ethanol out of corn? You get two products. Well, you get three, but two main products. You get ethanol and you get DDGs or dry distiller's grains. Well, what are distiller's grains used for? Animal feed. It is a high protein animal feed. And when you make ethanol, you essentially take a corn kernel and you convert all of the starch in that kernel into ethanol, sugars, and then to ethanol and you concentrate everything else that's left, the bran, the germ, the toxins. And so by making corn into ethanol, if you take a corn that has a five parts per million VOM level and you turn it into a distiller's grain, it concentrates at 3X and you end up with 15 parts per million that then you can't really feed to animals. Okay, several phone calls later, but I think that wraps up our, um, our our VOM lesson of the day. If you have any questions on that specifically, leave them down below. I'm not an expert in this area, but we have dealt with it in the past. I do know at least a little bit about it and um, kind of what we can do about it. Once it's in the corn, like I said, the best thing is to get it harvested and dried. Some guys will run stuff through a grain cleaner and, and knock some of the fines off, and that helps to reduce the, the VOM levels some. I, I think that probably does help, but... 
Um, there's just not a lot you're going to do about it once it's in the bin. So I have heard levels anywhere from one to three on the low end uh, to I know a couple counties east of here I heard of some 22s and even a 36 parts per million and those levels are just outrageously high. I don't know what you do with that corn at that point. So anyway, we are on our last round here. We've got this pass and that pass. Unfortunately, our cart is full, our truck is full, and our combine is not going to hold it all. So I'm going to have to wait for one more truck and then we'll help Phil get caught up. We'll get moved on to the next field. It's just before five o'clock. Uh, so we should be able to get another 30 acres done relatively easy, but we do have to get everything caught up here. On to the next. All right, this is kind of an odd-shaped farm. Looks like that. There are also a triangle little here and here that are about an acre to an acre and a half a piece. So that'll be fun. Uh, appears we have two different hybrids out here, but hybrid one is mix one. That means we threw everything we had left in. In fact, you can see how those two rows look different than all of these rows. Yeah, we got we all kinds of stuff in the planter in here. So uh, who knows what the moisture will be or where anything, what anything is, doesn't really matter. Probably be our best corn because that's how that usually works out. Um, we're gonna run some end rows off here real quick and then go back and get the grain cart and then help Phil get trucks down here and um, emptied and caught up from that standpoint. This is uh, by far the farthest away field that we still have left. So we're about two miles farther than the last one we were. Uh, four miles from the farm, four and a half. But it's not a big deal. There's only 30 acres here. So um, yeah, let's get it done. All right, we'll go get our, our grain cart here. So are you working here more now? Possibly, Possibly he says. Well, your levy failed. I assume you got fired today from your real job. No? You're going to cut your hours? No more overtime? Possibly. <laughs> the uh, county EMS had a, a ballot levy yesterday that was, was rather aggressive, um, but it failed. So Brock's, Brock's going to need a new job pretty soon. It's too bad that your boss is so mean to you here and you don't want to work here anymore. I know. It's so rough. So rough. <laughs> oh. Some people are born leaders. Other people are born... I don't swear on this channel. <laughs> I got back to the field down here. I got to wait for Brock to get here and he had to empty the cart and he's a little slow, slow on the road. So... Um, just looking at this corn, because we've got a whole mix of varieties and I have no idea what any of this stuff is, I just wanted to see what the ears look like in just kind of this mess of different corns and stuff here. And uh, we've got all kinds of different ear types and sizes here. We've got this really long and skinny one to the more short blocky ones. We've got upright and hanging down. Most of them were hanging down. There's a few that were upright. Some of them broke as I was husking them back. Some of them are paler yellow kernels. Some of them are darker. Um, but I did see some with this white uh, diplodia ear rot on it, but for the most part, not horrible. Like it's mostly just on the tips, nothing too severe, nothing growing clear down the ears. So I, I don't think we're going to have any trouble here either. It all looks okay. You know, what I do know is, or remember is in here, is a heavy dose of our candy corn, that 03B96 that we had in one of the fields a, a while ago that we did. Uh, I had a few more bags that got thrown in at the end here. So while that's not all of it, and it's blended with everything else from 98 to 113 day corn, um, there is a fair bit of that out here. Just walking back up to the combine and looking at the ground and well, you can tell that it's a bunch of different hybrids based on look at the cobs. We've got a, a, a light, lighter pink cob here, a dark red one, and then one kind of in the middle. I didn't find any white cobs out here. I don't know if we have any white cobs in our lineup right now, but occasionally you'll get one that's just white. It's not red or anything. So, But uh, long skinny ones with real narrow diameter cobs. We've got some that are thicker, fatter, just all the different characteristics. That's all out here. We do have a spot here with a very low wire. 
there'll be no driving under it. So we combine in from one side, we back out, and then we'll come in from the other side and get the rest of, of that. All right, well, I got dark on us. We're getting this field opened up. I've gotten this portion of it done. So now we've got to go up into this little finger and then all the way around the back, and we got lots of end rows to do. Oh, it's gonna kill some productivity, but it's okay. Um, uh, my wife dropped uh, Brayson off and uh, he jumped in the tractor with Brock and said he does not want to ride with me, so fine, be that way. No, it's okay. Um, yeah, we're going to keep working on this. I did just get off the phone with agronomist Wade. I uh, was curious his thoughts on some of this uh, toxin, uh, vomit toxin and other stuff that we had, and he reminded me of what that other word that I was looking for earlier. I called it a vomitoxin or Don. Uh, aflatoxin is the other one, aflatoxin. And I can't tell you what the difference is. I know they test for vom. Aflatoxins can be really bad too and also caused by um, by the, the ear molds and stuff. But I don't, I don't really know and understand what the differences are between them. So uh, anyway, I have to steer now. So I'm going to put the phone down. Well, whatever hybrid this is, it's quite tall. It's almost as tall as the top of the cab on the combine. Of course, it's next to the trees, so that's competition and it encourages it to get taller. And then and then, then it falls down when the raccoons climb on it. But hey, what are you gonna do? Picking up a rider. You brought me some snacks? <laughs> All right, what do we got? <laughs> what do you mean, no? <laughs> Show everybody your tooth. We lost a tooth yesterday. Was that yesterday? Two days ago. Potty break. <laughs> oh, what do we got? 15 acres done here. 13 to go. Yeah, we're about half done with this. All right, well, we're getting towards the end of this one. We finally got all the short rows done, and now we've just got these few long passes through here. Now we've got this big blank spot where I ran out of seed and for some reason had a gap when we planted no big deal all right now we know I'm right oh this is the 03b96 I knew I had a bunch of it in this field I couldn't remember exactly so this is the candy corn that's what basically the rest of this field is I I knew I had extra bags I, I must have uh, kept them separate and put them in at the end rather than uh, mixing them in with everything else so grain quality is about to get very dark orange and just yeah different looking so <laughs> see if we can see it in the green tank probably not gonna be noticeable right now yeah all right cool Let's see if Phil notices he noticed it the other day when we had a strip of a little bit Somebody rides here, and it's his bedtime, so he's got to go. That's you. Thanks for riding with me. Yeah, he doesn't want to go. All right, well, this is the last pass of this field. I, I, I want to say it's the last of the candy corn that we will ever see on this farm because, well, it's an obsolete hybrid that we have moved on from. The stuff that I planted this year was all just leftover bags from the previous year. But I think those two little one-acre pieces are also this corn, so it's, it's, it's probably over there too. But It is pretty. It's got beautiful grain col color quality. I'll show you a sample when we get back to the farm probably. But um, it's not yielding the best, so that's why we got rid of it. All right, time to be super efficient. There, you can pretty much see the whole field right there. We got, we got like... I think when we planted this with a corn planter, we went down, back, and around, and that was about it. So it's just uh, eight, 1.3 acres here, this little triangular piece. Done. 1.19 acres. And there comes the last truck we'll need tonight. I assume Brock is not empty yet. Um, trying to keep the fields separate, not that it's a big deal on these, but we can do it, so we might as well. So I'm gonna wait for him to empty into that truck that's just showing up, and then we'll get the combine empty, and we'll go do the 1.7 acre field that's down there on the corner. 
well, where that first triangle was more of an equilateral triangle, this one is a right triangle, and it's like four tenths of an acre bigger. So we actually have this one pass of rows to do after we got the end rows done. All right. Oh, and it was only seven rows. Didn't even get the eighth, eighth row in there. Okay. Well, we are done here. Now 1.52 in this one. <sighs> okay. Well, we had a good day. Uh, that's going to be it for tonight. It is a quarter after nine. So I'm going to take the combine home and we'll get her fueled up and ready to go for tomorrow because we're be back closer to the farm tomorrow. We'll probably just leave the cart here, get it in the morning, get the trucks unloaded, and then see where we're at with wet corn. Just two lights on tonight. Sweet. All right. Well, it's not exactly the middle of the night, but I um, went home for a while, let the dryer run. I just got back. I'm going to get it shut off here and uh, go home, go to bed. So thanks for watching today. If you have any questions and comments, feel free to leave them down below. And uh, we'll see you guys again tomorrow. Uh, let me show you this corn quick. I think this is a blend of a couple of different things, but you see these real dark orange kernels in there. That would be that candy corn. Just a different different color to it. That 3 B96. That's the last of it. Alright everybody, have a great night. We'll see you in the morning.